my business story. You know, I started businesses um, by accident. You know, um, in 2013, I was working. My first degree, I studied uh, chemical engineering, worked in the mines here in South Africa. Um, and in 2011, I left. I went to work in Nigeria and Germany. I spent two years uh, between these two countries. And I was asking God, why did he send me there? Because Nigeria is quite a different animal altogether, you know. And all the learnings uh, in Nigeria uh, have made me the entrepreneur I am today. Because every one day is an entrepreneur. Uh, in the streets, you meet young kids. They, they are, they're hustling. They're selling something. They're good at selling something and that sort of stuff. So upon my return in South Africa, it was actually by accident. So I used to be a femme uh, supporter of Donald Trump when he had The Apprentice. And I would watch how each person or group was given task and they managed the task quickly. And after the task, they then get the rewards and that sort of stuff. So that's where my, my entrepreneurial journey was actually inspired by that. So I was here for like three weeks and I needed to think of something quickly that I can do. Otherwise I'm back in the plane, going back to Nigeria and I was kind of getting bored, getting paid big salary that I couldn't even spend in the country because it was at the heightened period of Boko Haram. So I've had to live my life guided by uh, bodyguards with big guns and that sort of stuff. Of course, the company that I work for had to look after us. It was an obligation to look after all the expatriates. But then I started my business by accident. You know, I, I call it accident because when I left Nigeria to come here, I was just coming to visit. And I had two weeks. So I saw an advert in one of the newspapers that said another mine in Rustenburg is looking for, for, for trucks. And I then approached the company. I said I had trucks, but I never had trucks, just so you know. I said I had trucks. And they said, okay, bring the trucks. I said, no, I can't bring the trucks unless you give me the order. So they gave me an order of 11,000 tons that I needed to move from Rustenburg to uh, Whitbank. So I needed to complete that order. But I had no trucks. So I started advertising on my social media to look for trucks. Anyone who has trucks, please come see me. And, you know, in that week, I borrowed an office from someone. I had the most busiest week. Everyone came to see me. I had trucks. Where are the trucks? I, all of them gave them orders. Obviously, remember, I had an order. I now reworked it and gave it to them. Here's the order. We signed contract, bring trucks. I tell the mine, I'm bringing trucks tomorrow. But only to find that all these people never had trucks. So everyone who said they had a truck, Every one of these people who told me I had a truck, actually never had a truck, you know? So that's the story of trucking businesses. You have a middleman, and then a middleman, and then a middleman, and maybe down the road, the owner. And the owner does not know all these people, perhaps except the last person, you know what I mean? But then I persevered, and then I found one guy, because I also had lessons through that. What I then realized is the fault was also with me. Because the man gave me 170 ton, but I was giving people 90 rand a ton. Because I thought I'm an instant millionaire. Because I worked out the numbers like, I ah, know, I need to keep this part for myself. I'll give him 90 and I keep 80 rand. You know what I mean? Now, everyone who went to the next person reduced by 20 rand or 10 rand. So by the time it got to the owner, it was quite little. So the owner couldn't risk. So I spoke to one guy, I said, listen, Let's do something. Let's sign a an, 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 an non-circumvention agreement. Then I can open my books to you. Then you bring the owner of the trucks to sit with us in the same table. Do you get what I'm saying? Now I learned the power of transparency and the power of being less greedy. Because I wanted to be an instant millionaire. You can calculate how much. It was about 7 million or something. Imagine 7 million with, from nowhere. You know? So I thought, yeah, this is it. So from that experience, then I also learned the power of equity because when the owner of the car the, of the trucks came and said, "Here's the here are the trucks. I have two trucks, and let's work on the deal." And then when we worked on the deal, I said, "What is?" He said, "What is my equity?" He didn't have money to fuel the trucks, so fortunately, I put up quite a lot of money that I saved up. So I I, I turned that hundred thousand rents. I said, "Okay, I have hundred thousand rents." You can contribute the trucks. You can fuel the trucks. We can start this project and get it going. Are you with me? And we got it going. The rest is history. 
Do you get what I'm saying? So at, at, with any deal, you need to have some form of equity. That's why the bank says to you, pay a deposit because they want to see your commitment. But more often than not, entrepreneurs don't want to have any equity. They want to have it easy. They come to you and say, give me funding, but they still want to keep their jobs, formal jobs. But you must fund the business that they want to run part-time. They say, give me funding, but pay me a salary to work in this business. But it's their business. So why are they not, what's their equity? Are you with me? So that's the problem. Then fast forward, we moved on. While we waited for the business of the trucks, we revolutionized the boat cruising in Hartis. So I used to see the video, music videos with Mahuta and Fed Cook and the nice ladies doing music videos. I asked myself, how do they get this boat? Because I can see it's Hartis here. But why it looks like it's for the elite? Are you with me? Then one time I drove past Hartis and I went there. I asked one guy, who owns this big boat? I want to find out something. The guy told me, you can hire a boat. So I hired that boat with the money that I had saved up. I said, okay, I want to hire it. So I started with four hours. I paid half the money. And then I said, I'm coming back. And I went to advertise. So I'm doing this boat cruise. Uh, I'm charging 250 per person. It includes food, bring your cooler box, and, 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 and. So there was a website called Short Left. Do you remember Short Left? That Short, short Left, we advertised on Short Left. The boat crew sold out in two weeks. There's 200 people, right? Then I realized I needed to survive. This was for me surviving during this period because now I quit my job. I didn't go back to Nigeria. I'm here in South Africa. The trucking business pays after 60 days. I don't know if I'm going to get paid or not, you know. Uh, I needed to find something to do. But I then uh, uh, sort of uh, ensured that I downgrade my life. I lived in a one-bedroom townhouse. I drove a BMW, paid off. Obviously, you have to drive a BMW. You know, you're delivering tickets. People might trust you. You know, it's a black thing, you know. So, so we moved, and it was quick, you know. And I used to deliver tickets in Tembisa. I delivered tickets in Tembisa. I delivered tickets in Soweto. too. I used to do that all by myself. But you know, what I realized was in two weeks, in a week, we sold out the, the first boat cruise. The second week, we were already selling the second boat cruise because I realized I could actually make money with this boat cruise and I could survive. Each boat cruise, I made about 25,000 rent. Profit, by the way. That could carry me for months while I still waited for my other mining projects to come through. Do you hear what I'm saying? So as an entrepreneur, you have to make a plan, you know? You have to be a general dealer. Unfortunately, you know, when you start out, you have this goal that I want to be in fintech business, but fintech business may not make money today. And perhaps you might die in terms of your journey before you get to that goal. So what are you doing in between? You have to do something, right? So those are small businesses that I had to do and figure out. But that also opened up, is opening up the industry. So we opened up the boat cruising industry because it used to be elite, right? Now, people that came to my boat cruise started copying me because they saw that, hey, this is possible. They started speaking to the owners of the boat and they started doing their own boat cruises. The industry got opened up, but also for me, it was a new challenge because there's competition now. But I, I would always remain the leader because the, the, the owner there used to call me the captain. In my, in my advertising, I put my photo wearing the captain's outfit, you know? I wish I could project that and show you. So all the, every advert I took out, my face was there. I was a captain. And when we got there, I was wearing like a captain welcoming everyone. Do you know what I mean? That's when I learned hospitality business. Fast forward, I got involved with the news cafe in Rustenberg, with the, with the partner there. We got involved in that business. We bought that business. Later on, I launched a, a brand called Elements, a restaurant brand called Elements. And two weeks ago, during the NetBank Golf Challenge, we launched our uh, restaurant inside Sun City Resort. So when you visit Sun City, please visit our restaurant there. That's the journey of the restaurant. It's a long journey. It's a long journey. We, we also opened another element in Khabaroni uh, last year. I just sold the shares there. I'm left with like 25%. But one are running that store is doing quite well. I'm happy, but I want to exit the restaurant space. Only Sun City is remaining. So uh, I've since moved on to other businesses and I built a commercial property business. I own 
a small shopping center in Rustenburg called Gateway Junction. We have we have Burger King, KFC, and now Chicken Lincoln is also coming through. And we have interest in other commercial properties and pipeline projects. That's what we do. But the journey started small. But our next passion is in fintech biz business where I'm trying to solve problems for small businesses. So next year, around February, March, we're launching our app. Uh, it's called uh, Zaka. The business of Zaka, what we're doing is, you know, when you have a car problem and you are in mid -rent, sorry that I mentioned mid -rent, uh, and it's middle of the month, more often than not, entrepreneurs, a lot of people don't have money. So they go to the mechanic and say, can you fix my car? Mechanic says it costs 2,000 rents, right? If it costs 2,000 and you have 1,000 rents, ordinarily you pay a mechanic that 1,000 rent and you say you'll pay them 1,000 rent end of the month. More often than not, the mechanic is also an entrepreneur. They never get their money because uh, people don't have money. They say they'll pay, they'll pay, they'll pay, they'll pay. So we designed an app where you can actually capture that credit quickly in a, in a small uh, machine or even on your phone, and you can debit that person. So we're going to help all small businesses to be able to keep records. And those records they can then use as a data book to actually access finance from the banks because all of a sudden small businesses have what? A credible data book. That also helps with cash flow. And we've been speaking to some of the bank, including African bank that are interested in closing that gap. If you have a good data book, they can give you a loan at the back of that data book. It helps small businesses with cash flow. That's the current problem I'm trying to solve for all the entrepreneurs. Thank you. Before you go, Before he sits down, um, I, I just was having a question in my head, and I know we were not doing a question and answer, but <laughs> now that I think about it, so you were in a relationship with um, get that Sajay when it's a male, <laughs> Miss Employer or Mrs. Employer? How does it work? But yes, when you were employed, um, and then stepping out to go into entrepreneurship, what made you stick to entrepreneurship and not go back? to Mr. Employer? Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, question because, you know, there's, there's quite a number of people that have left their employment and they don't even stay for one year. They quickly go back. I think for me was, uh, I could say this was also a privilege on the other side, it felt like a case. So when I left South Africa just after 2010 World Cup and I went to work abroad, I was paid quite a lot of money. So one of the challenges was also when I left, I was quite disgruntled because I had had a fight with my boss and I felt like I was doing very well at the time and my spirit was dampened. So um, when I came back, I, I knew that South Africa wouldn't give me a job that could pay me as much as I was paid there. And I never wanted to go back to employment. But on the other hand, the freedom that you have being an entrepreneur, you being able to own your time, you being able to explore and do the things you love. And also still being able, although I, I was not married and that sort of stuff, didn't have children, you just having time, time, time for your family to do the things you love. But again, I think, like I said earlier on, a lot of entrepreneurs make mistakes where they want to stick to only doing one thing at the time that they are chasing. So I always say, find a way to realize that you must downgrade your life. After you've downgraded your life, because it's a painful thing to downgrade your life. Downgrade your life, live with the bare minimum, but then find a way that is stable to cover the cost of your living. Because if you can cover the cost of living, nothing will propel you to go back to your employment, right? So for me, that's what I did. That's why I did all these small things, boat cruises, events there. I even couldn't tell you because there was no time. There's a story where I even went to SAB and I pitched to them to help them with the sales of Hansa. Hansa was going down at the time. And I think they brought Asha here boost the answer sales. I worked on that as well and did presentation. Imagine something that's unrelated to engineering at the time, but I still did it. And they bought my story and they were paying me 50,000 rands a month to run promotions in all the taverns. I was there running. So at the end of the day as an entrepreneur, I don't say you must be a general dealer forever. At some point, you need to find your niche. Like myself, I needed to get out of those small businesses and go into high growth businesses. And one of them is in property business. The mining business is still doing well today property business, but my now focus after going to vets and study, I realized I could actually 
two bus- or, 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 I mean, run businesses that can have bigger uh, impact and of high growth. That's why then I did this. I started this uh, fintech startup uh, for about six, eight months now, and we've made huge um, uh, progress. Next year, Feb, we'll launch even our payment systems and that sort of stuff. But that's where my future is now. That's where I focus. But if you look, it started with all these things that I had to close the gap so that I don't end up going back to formal employment because that discourages all the other entrepreneurs uh, to, to join this journey. And I can tell you now, the multinationals would not be able to create the jobs that you in this room can create. They are already saturated. If at all, they are retrenching. So it's you that must close that gap through entrepreneurship and hire more people. So you, you've got to stay the course. You know, thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie.